Well, here we are again, everyone. All right, let's learn. It's time to learn. Stop. Stop talking, Mr. Tarver. Just start teaching. Okay. Multiplying and dividing exponents. All right. As you know, an exponent is essentially the little number that's up here. That means that you would essentially do x times x. All right. Enough background on it. Let's get started. Multiplying and dividing exponents. So, let's start with multiplying. It's pretty easy. Let's say you have x squared times x to the fourth. All you do is you take those exponents. If it's being multiplied, you add them together. Multiplying is like adding when it comes to exponents. So, I said it is like. That's what you use. 2 plus 4, x to the sixth. That's it. All right, now, all you would do, all you would do is have something to say after you say all you do, because I didn't, and you've noticed by now, because I'm still talking about it. If you can guess what dividing is, it's going to be subtract. So let's say you have x to the fifth divided by x squared. All you do is x5. You use the number on top minus the number on the bottom. So that equals x to the third. Okay? That's pretty much that. Now, I need to show you some weird cases of it. Well, not weird cases of it, but just kind of what you might expect if you uh, continue to learn a little bit. So let's say you got um, x to the third, y to the fifth, z to the eighth, times x squared y to the ninth. Okay? You're thinking, wow, that book's complicated. Lots of letters from the alphabet of hanging out with numbers. Not too bad, though. All you do is you focus on one at a time. Start with your x's. You've got x to the third times, let's get all of our x's here, x squared. We know we add those together, so it'll be x to the fifth. All right, so we mark those out. Big fan of marking out, that way you can't see it. Um, next, we go with y. Also, here's a fun fact. Whenever you have a bunch of variables like this, the procedure is to put them in alphabetical order, okay? That's how they like for you to place them. So, fun fact. Y to the 5th and Y to the ninth. We're still multiplying, so it'll be Y to the 14th. Now, mark those out. With Z, is there anything that Z to the 8th can be combined with that needs to be multiplied by? No, so it just stays Z to the 8th. And you're done. That's that. Now, dividing is a little bit more complicated. Um, first rule you need to know about exponents is you don't really need to have any negative exponents. So what you do is you have a negative exponent. To get rid of that negative, you switch it on the line. We know this is always over 1, right? So we'd switch that down here, and that allows us to drop the negative. So just be x to the fifth. Now what was up here at the top part? Well, what was over here? We know that was a 1 because it's 1 times that, so it's just 1. All right, so that's something we got to keep in mind because... Let's say you have um, y to the third over y to the eighth. Okay? Now, when you subtract these, you're going to get, you do y and then 3 minus 8. So y would equal negative 5, right? Which you can't have negative 5, like I just told you over here. You have to have a negative not in the exponents. That was a weird way to put a sentence. So you got y to the fifth would have to be under 1 because you'd have to switch that to the bottom. Okay? Let's see this practically. Not practically, but with um, a little bit more to it. Okay? So let's say we have x to the third, y, z squared over x, y squared, z squared. Okay? Now, Real quick, before we do that, I want to show you a trick um, when it comes to stuff like this, okay? Um, whenever you have something like this where it's like y to the third over y to the eighth, this is the way I tell people it's like a shortcut to do this. You're going to subtract them, and to do it without the negative ending up in there and having to do those extra steps, just look at the exponents. Wherever the bigger one is, wherever the bigger number is, that's where your why that variable is going to end up, whether it be the top or the bottom. For instance, this one, 8 is bigger than 3. 
Therefore, whenever I subtract these, the answer is going to end up on the bottom because that's where the 8 is. And I have to just subtract 8 and 3 and I get 5. Okay? It's like a war. Whoever has the most people wins. I know it's not always true, but let's pretend it's like back in the old, old days and people weren't very smart. Um, and they just were like punching each other in the face. All right, so back to this problem. Let's do it one at a time. We've got the x's. Okay? There's x to the third up here on the top. And we know this is x to the first, correct? Because there's only one of them. It's not there. Now, like I said before, the one with the bigger number is where they're going to end up. So they're going to end up on top. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay, done with the x's. Y's, we got y to the first and y squared. This number's bigger. They're going to end up on the bottom. And we just do 2 minus 1, which is 1, which I don't need to write it because it's pointless to write it. Last one, we got z squared and z squared. Guess what? Those are the same. What's 2 minus 2? So it'd be like z, 2 minus 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, so it'd be z to the 0. What is anything to the 0 power? 1. So anything times 1 would be the same, so there's your final answer. Man, that was good stuff, everyone. Hey, thanks for showing up. Give me subscribe and check out the Pizza? Pizza? Well, you heard the man subscribe. Um, check out TarverCademy.com and then go to all these little things on the right. Bye-bye.